happy December. As the seasons change, many of us have to adjust and prepare ourselves for the season change. Depending where we live, whenever you own a pretty extensive houseplant collection full of tropical plants, we also have to adjust and prepare them for that season change. So we're coming into winter where it gets dark at about 5, 5.30 in West Virginia. We get temperatures down below zero sometimes throughout the winters and it becomes a lot more dry. So that means it's time to rearrange plants based on where they're gonna get the type of lighting that they need. This is also a time to give my plants just a little bit of that extra care and attention, put the focus on the ones that maybe have been just kind of doing their own thing all year that might need a little bit of upkeep, trimming, whatever it may be. So in this video, we're gonna do all sorts of those types of things involving my house plants.
this is what we're working with. Can I just say it looks so, so, so much better uh, already. So I do still have to clean off, wipe down this bottom shelf down here, and I'm sure I'm gonna rearrange more. But this was like getting cluttered up. I am really bad about just like cluttering up my plants. So I, I don't know, it's just been nice. Uh, interacting so much with my plants it's been a while since i had i was kind of experiencing some burnout and things like that and i'll tell you a lot of the new growth that because i did a lot of stuff off camera but a lot of the new growth that i was seeing i it was plants that i hadn't like actually pulled out and looked at in a long time and i was really shocked with a lot of the growth so uh, i'm really glad that i did this and it's ever changing as plant parents and humans in general. I just, I hope that this does them justice. I don't have my Mars Hydro light on right now, but you know, in this home that we're in currently, there's just not a lot of light to work with. So I have a lot of supplemental light and a lot of stuff just kind of like gathered around the windows, the few windows that we do have. I think it looks nicer. These plants just look nicer together than how I had them. I mean, it's still a little clutter-ish but it's so much nicer than it was. This is really cool, okay? This is basically adult Legos, Lego plants, yeah. And you can interact with them. You can move them and change them. Petals, um, this is like a moon cactus. I don't know, it's very cool. They all do like something. Here's a little sedum. Oh gosh, see, I this is the only issue. My husband brought this home for me a week or two ago, and him and I set and put all of these together. It was actually really fun, but now I, I need two hands for that. Like, they move. There's two more, and you can also, like, attach them together however you want. Uh, this is just kind of the little shape that I just did. I changed it a couple times already. This is an aloe vera. Like, it's so cool. This one's really neat. But there's two more, and I will show you. One of them got dropped, um, but it has all these little petals. This one was really cool, too. So I got to find the pieces because some of them went under uh, my plant stand over there. And then there's another big one, and it is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So they do look really cool when you have them all together, but uh, you can set them apart as well, and they still look pretty cool. So I just want to show these to you guys because I'm obsessed. They have orchids. They have a bird of paradise. They are pretty expensive. I will tell you that. Okay, y'all. I'm not sure how good we can see, but this is a little terrarium situation that needs some attention. So in here, I have my philodendron brandy. Well, this is one of my philodendron brandies. This is the only way I've been able to keep this plant like truly happy honestly is by keeping it in an enclosed space like this but uh there is some nastiness going on there's some yellow leaves down in there some decaying bits that i need to remove and i'm gonna give it a good water so i have some tweezers here that i use specifically for plant work and we're just gonna get down in there Now I'm just going to water the moss. It's pretty dry. I don't have to water it very often because it stays really humid in there. I usually keep the lid on. But whenever I do water in here or any enclosed space like this, 
I tend to leave the lid or whatever it is trapping the humidity in open for a couple of days after I water so we don't get like any mold or uh, bacteria growing or anything like that in the enclosure. Just let a little bit of airflow get down in there so um, that's what we're gonna do. That's that. Just gonna water really good. I have my squamiferum here. He's a little bit out of control, as you can see. Still growing like crazy. He has two growth points. But I think I'm going to take a couple cuttings because I would like him to fill out a little bit more at the top. And he's pretty heavy. His leaves are really heavy. So here's one growth point. And here's the other. This one has gotten pretty leggy, so I am going to cut this one back to right here. Hi. Thank you, hi. So, we have this cutting. This is a top growth point right here. So I'm going to cut it right here just to make sure we have a couple of nodes to work with. I have a vessel of water here. I'm going to stick both nodes under the water. I'll put these guys in a sunny spot to hopefully root. I really just can't bring myself to take too much off of him, even though I know he could probably use it. He needs a pull really badly. I might actually see if I can find him something really quick. Hi! So my phone stopped recording and I didn't realize it, but... Basically, I ended up finding two CocoCore pole extensions for this guy, and um, he looks a little awkward on the pole because he's not used to climbing a pole, obviously, but my hope is that he will take to it, and I don't know. He's beautiful either way. I love this plant so much. I also cleaned his leaves really good. Uh, the cocoa core poles are not that stable. I have some really nice trellises at the post office. Actually, I just need to go get them. I actually have the core poles supported with this stone, this rock, that my husband actually found digging in the dirt, digging in the ground at his job at work. Yeah, this is him for now. I think he looks a lot better than he did. All right, so I'm gonna need y'all to look over everything. My mess, okay? But we're now in our master bathroom. This is my husband and I's bathroom connected to our bedroom. The only light that we have in here is, is this skylight, right? Which I love, I love skylights. Anyways, I have had plants in here since we moved in, just not to this extent, and I wasn't really, I was just kind of testing plants out to see who could do good in here and who wouldn't. Here I had several different things hanging here, but most recently I had a Calathea orbifolia. I decided to take that down because they don't like the cold and they don't like drafts. And though there isn't any drafts coming from the skylight, it still could get potentially really cold. So that's why I took it down and I just went with a safe bet a safe option which is my philodendron prince of orange he's beautiful he's currently unfurling that leaf and he recently put off the one next to it but uh, these can grow in pretty low light low-ish light i would say um, and do fine and they're not picky or finicky in the slightest so that's why i stuck him there i think he'll be fine for the winter moving over we have this crazy guy that i just put in here um this is one that i'm unsure about and i'm unsure if he'll stay here throughout the entire winter because i don't know how he's gonna do look at him i fertilized this plant not too long ago and it's just like boom he started shooting out all these babies he looks insane but i love it this is a type of jungle orchid cactus, jungle cactus, whatever you'd like to call him. So we'll see how he does, but I don't really think they need like super bright light, but I could be wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong. This is my Cebu Blue, and honestly, he's lived here 
since we moved in. He's been here for going on two years now, and he does fine. He grows fine, but we actually gave him a makeover in an upcoming video, a chore at a time video. So we'll see how this one does. This one's lived here two years. He's fine. This one I'm sure will be fine. And then you guys, I actually moved my little moon shelf. Let me turn on the light. Is that gonna help or hurt things? I don't know. We moved my little moon shelf in here and um, it's obviously right under the skylight. So I know these plants will do well. So I have my little Hoya Bella here. I love her, like honestly, precious. Uh, and then up here, oh gosh, I'm standing on a stool. Up here we have a little neon pothos, which I also feel will probably do fine. This was uh, cuttings that I took off the mother plant, which I lost. It's growing back really lovely. And then I have a couple of my little crystals here and there. And then this is actually the largest little plant to the Lego set that my husband got for me. Um, the plant Legos, succulent Legos. The petals and stuff go up and down. You can close the flower or leave it open, which I think is really fun. I just thought this one was kind of cute here on the shelf, so that's where she is. Let me get back down. I almost forgot about this one. Before, I had this like jakey, wobbly, rusting blue stand. It was kind of a nightmare. I liked it when I initially bought it. It was really cheap, just like a little metal tin stand, but yeah, sitting by the tub, it ended up rusting out really, really bad, and it just is super wobbly. So it's not really a safe place to have plants. Since I rearranged so many things, I was able to free up this little plant stand and move it in here, and I think it looks a lot better. And this is also just like a, I'm trying it out, little trial run. All right, I need to see what's going on with this plant. This is philodendron fibrosum. The new leaf. I mean, spider mites have just been viciously attacking this one over and over, but that's not the only issue because it's also in this really crappy, non absorbent sphagnum moss. Um, this stuff just isn't any good. I don't think I want to move it to soil yet. I want to get in here and look at the roots because I really don't see much of anything going on. So, anyway, I have some good moss here. I might kind of just see what I can do. I should wet this moss, but, but I'm just going to take this stick out and I'm probably going to have to cut this plant as well. The stem is really dry because, um, I mean, I water this moss and it's just like, it's not, it doesn't feel like it's getting to the roots. It's dry like immediately after. Definitely a very dry root ball. Okay, so we have a root ball. Yeah, it's just very dry. The roots are really dried out. I'm getting moss everywhere. I'm gonna add this moss to it and see if this helps. There's some large coarse perlite in here as well. Let's just see here. Surround the roots with this stuff because it's just, like I said, super absorbent. And I think we're also going to trim the plant. Get in there. It's so squeaky. Oh my god. I'm literally going, going to uh, snap this plant. I need to chop her. It is working on a new leaf right there. But that last newest leaf looks really crappy. And all of the most of the leaves look crappy, let's be honest. This one looks okay. This one's, eh. This one's okay. Mm. I'm just going to chop it down, I guess. I don't know what I'm doing. Just put this back down in here, you know? I think I'm going to remove this lower leaf because it's pretty rough and then stake this back up and it would be nice if this one starts growing and then this one shoots off a new growth point. I'm just going to top this off with some more of this New Zealand sphagnum moss 
and I'm going to keep this near my humidifier and see what it does. I'm also going to spray it with some neem oil. My goodness, it's pitiful. Okay, I think we're done with this for now. I'll see you tomorrow. We have one of my Hoya Crimson Princesses here, and I'm going through watering. This plant is still in the nursery pot that I bought it in. And uh, I just was having a, a look and noticing that I think it needs a potted. So I start tugging around on it a little bit and very easily you can see the entire root ball just kind of slides right up out of the pot which means the roots have basically, there's more roots than soil in the pot, is what that means. And it's definitely time to up-pot her. Okay, I decided to repot, well, up pot my philodendron campy, campy eye, and in doing so, I noticed there was a little bit of rot, like the roots just weren't the healthiest, so I did remove those roots, but I decided to do a little peroxide soak on the root ball before we pot it up.
Good morning. It's the next day. This is philodendron campii. It soaked all night in our peroxide solution, so it's time to rot her up. Okay, we already have some soil. Not the best soil, but soil nonetheless in this pot. And I really want this plant to grow big, so I'm happy putting it in this larger planter. And it's terracotta, so it's gonna dry out quickly what the roots are looking like the next day after soaking all night. I can't find my favorite little shovel scoop. That's annoying. Okay, so I'm not going to up pot or mess with the roots of my begonia mulata bulata, but it did get knocked off a shelf one time after I got it and uh, lost some of the soil. And so I feel like the pot's only uh, a little over halfway full and it's drying out very, very quickly. I have to bottom water this plant and realistically normally i would go ahead and up pot it if it were spring or summer but because it's basically winter and it's a begonia i'm not going to do that instead i'm just going to kind of top off the soil carefully There's a brand new little leaf right there, so I don't want to mess that up. It's not very far up off the soil. If the soil gets wet, that could potentially, probably would, ruin that new leaf. Okay, that's better than it was, huh? This doesn't need water quite yet. I just watered it a couple days ago. So I'm going to wait and try to let that baby leaf grow in a little bit uh, before I give it a water. And when I do water, I, I bottom water, as I said. So it should be fine. Now this is a little Anthurium bilinorium. He's been stagnant for a little bit, but I do believe that there's a growth point. I hope I'm holding this in front of the camera. There's a growth point right here. That's pretty promising. I can't wait to see it. He does not need repotted. He's actually in a really nice chunky airwood mix. Uh, this is like my preferred airwood mix. And I can see, because he's in this clear pot, we do have some new roots uh, coming in. Yeah, I think he likes the soil. Anyways, point being, it's not time to up pot this plant. But what we can do is top dress him with some of my favorite sphagnum moss. I got the good stuff, the best in my opinion that you can get. I want to take advantage of it and use it on some of my strugglers. And I'll show you why this stuff is so amazing in just a moment. I know it doesn't look like much for this little brick, but you'll see. If you haven't used this before, you'll see. Anyways, I just want to top dress the soil with sphagnum moss just to maybe trap a little bit more moisture down in the pot, keep him 
moist a little bit longer because right now I think the soil's too well draining. Let's do that. Just going to take a small little section like so. And watch it expand and drink up all that water. Okay, look how much moss that little tiny chip off the block gave us to work with. Like, it's amazing, and it's the fluffiest, uh, nicest, most clean moss I've ever used. It is a little pricey, but it's totally worth it, and my plants thrive in this stuff. And there's hardly any debris. That's like my next favorite, favorite thing. Uh, the other brands that I get, uh, a lot of the moss just isn't fluffy and it isn't absorbent and it has a ton of debris and like trash and leaves and twigs in it so uh, this you really get what you pay for I definitely feel like I've been taking a much, I've definitely been taking much better care of my plants, but actually finding the desire to, like, on, on a regular basis, and just when I see something that needs done, just kind of jumping in and getting it done, uh, and it feels really nice, <laughs> but I definitely could tr contribute a lot of that to taking down my grow tent, and my plants are just, like, much more accessible to me at any given moment. I can just walk over and grab whatever I see. Whereas I couldn't even really see everything when they were in the tent because I couldn't even get in to like look at it behind the shelves, you know, because I had it so cluttered. So it's been, it's been nice. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and water this in Therium. Soil is just perfect. So well draining. All right, that's that. Good morning, it's another day. A new day and new stuff to show you, to do. So let me take this down. This is a little watering tray that I can like set across my sink and set plants on to water them that my husband made me because my old one broke that he had made me. So I went and collected these cheap little items from the Dollar General and uh, made this for me it's been a couple months now but isn't it cute and then it has up at the top so you so i can hang it up whenever i'm done with it it won't last forever but it'll last a while i'll get some use out of it all right so this is my kitchen window uh window seal and i just wanted to show you guys i had to move i had to move all the plants that were here out and i replaced them with plants that i feel like or we're trying it out it's an experiment uh with plants that i feel like can survive this window this winter because we do have some pretty cold and harsh winters here if it gets down too cold like below zero i'll move everything away from the windows we're probably gonna have to put plastic up i really don't know yet point is i had some plants in the window that were definitely already starting to react negatively to the cold uh, this window does get a little bit cold, you know, when it's cold outside and it frosts and it snows and all of that. So I was seeing some slight damage already. So I pulled those plants immediately. I replaced them with plants that I am hoping uh, can tolerate the cold a little bit better. And if I see any negative signs on any of these plants, I will remove them right away. So don't worry. 